Hi everyone, sorry I'm a little bit late today. to today's edition of English Live. My apologies that I'm a few minutes late today. Um, Mr. English with Holly had meeting 10 until 11. Um, so we just had to swap over with our children dead on 11 o'clock. So um, what are we doing today? Well, today we are looking at vocabulary. So this is another vocabulary structure lesson. So hopefully you'll go away with this lesson knowing a few more words. I think we're gonna look at seven of them today. Um, and be able to sound really smart and intelligent when you're having conversations with your family or friends over the phone on FaceTime, or of course, when you meet them in person again, hopefully soon in the future. So first things first, I've got some hellos for you all today. Um, Mummy English with Holly, 
who, as you, many of you know, I can see lots of you are saying, hi, Holly's mum, because you know that she's my um, shout out coordinator. And so she sent me over some names today. She said, so um, shout out to Alice, Will and Beatrice from Maidenhead. Hello to Evie, 12 and Albie, who is 10 in London. Um, hello to Judith, who is asking for a shout out for her mum, who works for the NHS. Big shout out for Judith's mum and thank you for everything you're doing. Hello to Amy, who is 10 in Kent, who is watching with her dog. And hello to Rocky and Jasmine and their dog, Disco. Great name for a dog. Uh, Disco, the dog, and they've been watching since lessons began. Thank you for staying with me for all of these eight weeks. This is eight, the eighth week. Can you believe it? Hello to Oscar, who is 11 in Acton. I used to teach in Acton. Hello to Bobby. It's your first time watching today. Bobby, I hope you enjoy the lesson. We have a bit of fun. It's, you'll enjoy it. And uh, hello and a big shout out to Isaac in Milton Keynes, who watches every video. Commitment. Well done, Isaac. Hello to Dash in Leeds. She's seven and it's her fourth lesson today. So thank you for staying with me for all four lessons. And hello to Scarlett and her mum, Tanya, and their cats, Kevin and Vinny from Milton Keynes. And Harley Rose, it's your first lesson today. I hope you enjoy it. And Kai from St. Joe's School, big hello and shout out to you. And Amelia, who is nine in Liverpool. Whew, lots of shout outs there. So uh, how does English Live work? Well, as some of you are new, I will explain. You can download a PDF document. It looks a little bit like this. And it has six different tasks on it that you can do um, after the lesson to extend and consolidate your learning. Um, there's something for every different sort of learner on there, um, practical activities, creative activities, and so on. And you can get this from the English Live Resources group on Facebook. And it's the same place where you can upload photos and videos of your work and share it with everybody else who's participating in these lessons, okay? Right, so we're going to get on with our starter activity now. Every day we do a quick starter activity, get the brain working a little bit before we dig into a bit of work. And today ooh, is no different. So I've got two words for you. You may or may not, you probably won't know what they mean. I'm going to give you a minute and a half to either write down what they mean or what you think they mean. Look it up if you can, if you're with your adult, or you can just make up a completely bonkers definition of your own, okay? But the purpose is just to get your brain moving around and thinking a bit about words and their definitions. Play. Off you go. Fastidious and stoic. Palani Kumar, very good. Sarah Wennell, very good, well done. David, hello, there's your shout out. Pause. 
Okay, lots of you in the comments um, put what the definition of these two words were. So well done to you. A special, a special, a special well done to you if you already knew what these words meant. So if you are not sure and you didn't have time to look it up, or if you focused on coming up with some creative, really interesting, bonkers definition, um, fastidious means attentive to detail and very concerned with detail. Some people are very fastidious learners. Some people are a bit more relaxed. I'd say I'm somewhere in the middle. Uh, stoic. Stoic is a person who can endure hardships without showing any emotion or very little emotion um, and without complaining. OK, so hopefully. The non-complaining element of the word stoic, hopefully you're all managing to do that whilst doing your homeschooling at home. OK, so uh, those are two new words, hopefully, for some of you. We're going to move on to another word. But I want you to bank in your head what these two things mean, because we're going to use them in the next task. So this word, as some of you will know, I do like words that have been borrowed from French and Latin. And um, ennui is no different. So ennui is a noun and it is a feeling of listlessness and dissatisfaction arising from a lack of activity or excitement. I think some of you probably have a good understanding of what that feels like right now. Um, in other words, it means boredom. I've just popped that in red there. So boredom would be a synonym for ennui. And the example I've got here is he gave in to feelings of ennui. So what I would like you to do very quickly is to use this new word in a sentence. OK, uh, if you think that's too easy for you or you'd like to challenge yourself, I'd like you to try and include either fastidious or stoic in the same sentence. And if you really want to push yourself, you can do a sentence that includes ennui, fastidious and stoic. OK. Quite a challenge. I'd love to see some of them in the comments as well. OK. Play. Off you go. Jane from Jessica. I love it. Someone said this lesson is not on we. <laughs> not quite the right usage of the word, but definitely the right sentiment. Wow, loads of great examples. Hello, Safa and Zoya and Hannah. Pause. Okay, so well done. Lots of you I can see in the comments have come up with some really fabulous sentences using this new word. And some of you, most of you I can see are incorporating the two words from the starter activity. So really well done for that. Hopefully now you've banked three new words. 
we're going to move on to another. So this one was actually from the Spellathon a few weeks back. It's a word I love. It rolls up the tongue really nicely. And that word is ostentatious. Ostentatious. Okay, it's an adjective and it means characterised by pretentious or showy display designed to impress. Okay, and the example is, and I will bring this closer in just a moment, um, she was glamorous without being ostentatious. OK, so the task I've got for this word is slightly different. OK, um, you can use it in a sentence, but what I would like you to do is try and come up with some synonyms for ostentatious. OK, there's that cinnamon, 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 synonyms. It's live. <laughs> OK, so uh, come up with a sentence of your own using ostentatious if you'd like to. But also I'd like you to come up with lots of synonyms. OK, good luck and off you go. Play. Synonyms, I'm waiting. Glamorous, mm, okay. Glamboyant, whoa, a fusing of glamorous and flamboyant. Flamboyant, flamboyant, flamboyant is a really good synonym for this word. Lovely. Um, still seeing some oh, garish. That's another really good one. Some fantastic synonyms for the word ostentatious. So when you go to use words like flamboyant or extravagant, consider, would you be able to use the word ostentatious instead? Would it fit? OK, see if you can use it today in your conversations at home. OK, the next task we are going to do, we'll look at three different words three different definitions, and I'm going to ask you to try and match them up. What should I do with these sheets? Here we go. So the three words we're going to look at are epitome, tryst, and mercenary. You may already know these words, you may not. Don't just go and quickly look them up online. Try and do the activity first and test your brain. So I'm going to do the trying to put two sheets up at the same time thing now. Here we go. And she's done it. OK. Um, I have labelled them one, two, three and A, B and C, because if you are not very quick at writing, you might prefer to discuss your answers and then just put one and B or two and A or, or whatever the answer may be and jot it down that way. So I'll bring it a little closer. We have three different definitions. Uh, the word that matches with this definition, there are two different definitions. So the word has got two meanings. So I thought that might put a little twist on things for you. So the first one, a private romantic rendezvous between lovers. And the next one is primarily concerned with making money without moral consideration or a professional soldier hired to serve in a foreign army. And finally, a 
person or thing that is a perfect example of a particular quality or type. I'd like you to try and match these up. I'm gonna give you about a minute. Uh, if you're a very quick finisher, you can try and come up with synonyms for these words, or you can try and use them in a sentence of your choice. Okay, good luck. Play, off you go. do this task and trying to match them up. Good effort. going to give you the answers so that you can check off your own work. Uh, so uh, epitome, the meaning of the word epitome is a personal thing that is a perfect example of a particular quality or type. So I'm just going to draw a line, but you will see whether you've got it right. Okay, so one and C match up. Trist. A tryst is a private romantic rendezvous between lovers, like Romeo and Juliet from last week's Shakespeare's lesson. Uh, so tryst matches with this one up here. So two and A go together. Well done if you got that correct. And finally, mercenary has two different meanings. We've got an adjective and a noun, primarily concerned with making money without moral consideration or a professional soldier hired to serve in a foreign army. So this one, three and B match up. So what I'm gonna do now is test how well you remember these definitions by giving you some sentences and asking you which one, which one of these words should be used in each of the sentences. So make sure you've got it clear in your head what epitome means, what tryst means, and what mercenary means. You ready? Okay, I'll read the sentences out and then I'll bring them closer. You can either copy down the sentence or you can discuss it with your family um, or have a little think and just write down the words for each one. Okay, so number one, she was the blank of true elegance. Number two, they had a blank attitude towards running the business. Number three, some consider BBC's Antique Roadshow as the blank of British culture. And they had lost many in this war and had called upon the blank support of their neighbours. They lingered for a while, enjoying the last moments of their blank. OK. Maybe one of the words has been used more than once. OK. <laughs> I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to do this because it is tricky and it will test whether you remember what we did in the last activity. Play. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks, Mum, for the tip. over these now um, because we are swiftly running out of time I always try and cram too much learning into these short videos uh, so the first one she was the blank she was the epitome of true elegance I'll just put an e there for epitome so well done if you got the first one correct they had a mercenary so they had a mercenary attitude towards running the business. Some consider BBC's Antique Roadshow as the epitome of British culture. Some, not sure who, but the word works in the sentence. Uh, they had lost many in this war and had called upon the mercenary support of their neighbors. They lingered for a while, enjoying the last moments of their tryst. Okay, so well done if you've got five out of five on that one. And if you didn't, that's absolutely fine. This was a really tricky task and it takes practice to learn new words and be able to utilize them in a sentence. Okay, some quick shout outs for you. Hello to, um, oh, where are we up to? Yes, to Lara and Dylan, who are eight and ten in Essex. Hello to you. And to uh, Jess in Bro or Jess Broomby, who is ten, who is in Haslemere. Hello. A big shout out to Josh in Letchworth, to Jack, who is eleven in Bath. Hello to Fraser and Finn in Milton Keynes, just down the road. Uh, to Nico, who is nine in Slough. Hello to Emma in Northern Ireland. And to Emily, who is 10 in Verwood, it's a surprise shout out for you. So hello. And um, a big shout out to Aid in Warwick. So thank you to all of you for joining me. OK. Do we have time for one more task? Ooh, maybe just. I'm going to put all of the words that we've learned today on the board. And I'd like you to really quickly try and use as many of them as possible in a sentence. It might be something you need to continue with after the lesson, if you want to do it accurately, but you can have a quick, um, quick attempt at it now. I'm gonna give you just a minute and I'll see what pops up in the comments. Play. There you go, last task of the lesson. Fastidious, stoic, ennui, ostentatious, epitome, tryst, and mercenary. Hello 
Hello to Isla's mum who works for the NHS. Hello, Lily and Marlowe. Hello, Pippin. Pippin and Dobby the cats. <laughs> Okay, great example of using them all. Somebody listed them and said are oh, words that you can use or words that you can learn in Holly's lesson. <laughs> Clever. Hello, Sammy. Big shout out to you. Sammy with an eye. Well done, Addison, for using the words in a sentence. Fab work. Well done. Okay, that is going to bring us to the end of today's lesson. Thank you so much for joining me and hopefully you will take away seven new words with you from this lesson. And if you don't use those words, they'll just disappear into the dungeons of your brain. So really try to use those words in as many uh, sentences as you can today. Get the practice in and do the tasks um, after the lesson because that will really help too. Just a little reminder for you that tomorrow we are looking at Shakespeare's The Tempest and I've got some really, really fun activities for after the lesson, um, some really fun uh, practical ones. On Thursday, I'll be doing vivacious verbs and we'll be looking at those. And on Friday is our spellathon that we do every week. So hopefully you'll be able to join me for all of those lessons for week eight of our lockdown learning. I can't believe it's week eight. And if you have any suggestions for week nine, drop me a message. I always love to hear your ideas and I do use them. So from me and from Bertie, Bertie, you're gonna come and say a quick goodbye to everybody. <laughs> oh, you're getting heavier. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Have a lovely afternoon. Good luck with your tasks and I will ah, see you tomorrow at 11.